How do we know that on our iPass 1 work we were successful? So from 2000 to 2012, we administer to our students every other year and we rotate these surveys. So these are national surveys since SESI, okay? They all measure student perceptions. Well, it turns out that in each of those instruments, there is just a few questions around advising. And remember, we're, we sort of redesigned our advising process. We've been working on trying to help advising not get low student perception scores since 2000. And every two years, and we would do things, and we would do things, and we would do things, and, we, and the next, and we would be disappointed. And it's very, for people who work very hard, and the advisors work very hard, it wasn't fun for them either. And remember, we don't have any other information, just the way the student filled out the bubble on the form. So we did our first round of iPass work. I mean, we put in our grant application. We were not just going to measure retention and completion, but we wanted to measure the attitude of the students toward the advisors, in a way, and the advising process. And I can tell you, in every single one, moved significantly. So we know we don't necessarily care whether it was, so this is the unpopular part, because everybody wants to know, what was that magic bullet, right? Well, there's probably a bunch. We don't quite know if we pull this out. And you know what? We, we don't have the time in higher ed to do that really refine 10 years worth of research would tell us that, right? Was it because you know, there was somebody who sat at the front desk who was more welcoming. I don't, I don't know. But I do know that all of, we tried many, many things for over a 10 year period. They never made any difference. When we implemented a very, um, when we implemented a new process for advising and then overlaid technology to support their new process, that we saw a significant uptick in the students' positive reactions to the advising process.